Welcome to Mozambique. This is our segment two of our Trans-Africa adventure with the INEOS Grenadier. This is gonna cover our travels from crossing from South Africa into the southern point of Mozambique, enjoying its incredible coastline, traveling through its cities, and enjoying the incredible, beautiful people of this wonderful country. We cover our camping along the beach and the various places that we're staying and enjoying overlanding in Africa. Love how the road sign says 100 kilometers an hour. <laughs> yeah, right. Driving along the N1 and it's a pretty bad, pretty bad stretch of road. I mean, there's really, there's pretty much no asphalt left. And then you get to little sections where it gets a little bit better, but for the most part, it's uh, it's comical to watch all of the vehicles swerving left and right, bounding up and down as they crash through the various potholes. It does seem that in, at least in the Grenadier, that just getting over into the dirt a little bit is actually a bit better overall because it's not such a sharp impact like a pothole is. So you got to be paying attention, you got to be on your game because these are these are some big potholes. There's easily some that are over a foot deep. So if you're not careful, here's one. Look at this. Yeah, crazy. Fun road though. So we left Maputo this morning, provisioned up on a few things, and we decided to go on this remote sand track. Joe actually found the tracks from a fellow motorcycle rider and he was willing to share them. So we are pretty remote right along the beach. So we're playing around here on the beach and I am uh, temporarily not making forward progress. <laughs> so I'm letting some air out of the tires and we'll see if we can back out of this thing. For episode two of Crossing Continents, we explore the wild and stunning coastline of Mozambique, starting at the village of Punta de Oro. Being off season, this sleepy hamlet was a perfect respite from the long highway miles in South Africa, allowing us to settle into a much slower pace. We found some locally sourced seafood and interacted with other travelers. It felt like the Africa trip was taking on a new tempo and it also gave the opportunity to enjoy much warmer weather, flip-flops, and the challenging coastal dune driving with the Grenadier. Hello, hello, hello. I jump your car. <laughs> jump it. Looks like we got some accessories on the back of the car here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're getting a ride to the beach. I like it. <laughs> the trip really slowed down in the outpost coastal village of Tofu Beach, where Joe and I really settled into the meandering days of healthy food, regular workouts, and a few podcasts. We were even able to capture some drone footage of surfers and breaching whales. Uh, 
and the local community even hosted a spirited soccer tournament that packed the roads with partygoers all celebrating the big game. Despite the sea of people, it felt safe and energizing, watching how much fun everyone was having after the sun set on the Indian Ocean. And the Grenadier became the designated taxi for other travelers as I assumed designated driver duties and shuttled everyone back and forth between the soccer tournament and the local pubs. Everywhere we went, the Grenadier attracted attention, which according to the border officials, it was the first INEOS temporarily imported into the country of Mozambique. While Joe was at the beach, the entire detachment of National Park Rangers inspected the wagon. They asked questions about performance and looked in awe at the overhead switches and off-road features. This would become a theme throughout our journey, as it became clear that the Grenadier is in fact built for Africa and Africans. After Tofu Beach, it was time for Joe to leave the journey, as he had other expeditions planned with Bonafide Moto Company throughout Botswana, Namibia, and even India. Joe was an incredible member of the team, and we added an entirely new set of memories to our years-long friendship. Travel is always about the people we experience the journey with along the way, and Joe made every moment all the better. Can't thank you enough for such a great work opportunity, great vibes along the way, beautiful locations, and uh, for being such a great friend. It uh, was an absolute honor and a privilege. Hey, Cheers, man. Love you, bro. Bye. So thank you for one of the most memorable experiences of my personal career and professional. Thanks, man. Okay, so I decided to get off of the N1. This is a route I had looked at before. It's a nice overland track on the dirt, but it's, it's a wide, fairly well-maintained dirt road. It's actually a lot better than the N1 that I got off of. And it's called the R520 and it goes um, through a couple villages and actually goes a little bit closer to the border with Zimbabwe. And I'm actually looking to stay at a village where they worked with an NGO to create a little uh, campsite. Yeah, so I'm at the Morabane Forest Reserve Inzu Camp, and it's a beautiful spot up here in the jungle. Uh, it's actually a fun little road to get up in there. A wonderful hosts. It's actually a combination of the local community and an NGO that helped them to build this camp. Um, really fun spot, so I'd highly recommend it on your way up to Malawi or down from Malawi. Yeah, I'm driving over the Zambezi right now. It is massive. I mean, it looks navigable by large ships. This is one of the lifelines of Africa. Huge river. Impressive. Big bridge, too. So this is the first time I've ever had gigantic potholes on a bridge. Never seen potholes on a bridge like this. I mean, I've seen maybe a few potholes on a bridge, but this is like the worst pothole bridge I've ever seen in my travels. It's bad. So, oh, that's crazy. Right on the bridge. Uh, so fun, kind of, but still fun. What's that? <laughs> of course. This is my clothes and my camera gear. I'm a tourist. It's just uh, like a pass. Sneak. Sneak. Yeah. Like 
Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. So I just drove over the Save River. It's a choke point. It's a, it's a big river. You've got to go using the bridge. So they have a pretty detailed police military checkpoint. You know, the most kind of switched on guys with guns. And a little bit more of an interrogation, certainly more than I've experienced so far in Mozambique, which was interesting. And they were clearly looking for things that um, maybe I shouldn't have, but also they were looking for some kind of some kind of reward for me or some kind of a bribe. Um, the only thing I offered was something cold to drink, which I do feel comfortable doing. It's a hot day, but um, not comfortable with giving him any kind of money, even though they asked for it a couple times. So, but uh, yeah, interesting experience. So far, Mozambique has been so chill, but uh, a little different. Looks like we've already got another another checkpoint of some kind up here. So. that. Hello, my friend. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. Hey. How are you? I'm good. I'm yeah. enjoying your beautiful country. Yeah. <laughs> Mozambique, yeah. Mozambique is amazing. Mozambique is amazing. I'm going, I'm going to Malawi. Malawi. Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. It's very nice. Okay, okay. good car, huh? It's a good car, yeah. Good, good, good. Thank no, you. My friend, huh? Okay. Ah, worry, my friend. Everything my friend. A cold drink? Yes. I just gave them all my cold drinks. Ah, on friend. the bridge. Ah, they took my cold this, drink. This is different. This side is a Sofala. This uh, side is a Inyambai. Okay. All right. I, I do have I do have an extra cold drink. I'll get one for you. Is that okay? Okay. 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 All right. You doing good? Yeah. Okay. Have a good day. Have a good day. All right, well, there was another one. Yeah, it's not so much that they're looking for a money bribe, but they, uh, they're definitely looking for something just to keep interrupt their day. He asked specifically for something cold and dirty, so I get it though. It is a hot day and they're standing out there in the sun, so. But there's a lot being, a lot of work being done on this road, um, so it's going to be really nice when they get it finished. But right now it's, it's certainly one of the, the worst roads that we've seen on this trip so far, but it's actually fairly consistent with a lot of secondary roads that you find in other countries. Oh, this is their main N1 all the way up the country, so it's interesting. Yeah, it's a pretty rough road, but I'm making good time. Looks like I'll be in camp by 4.30 or so, pending too many other stops. But beautiful day in the neighborhood. I'm motoring along here in northern Mozambique and on my way to the Malawian border and I took a little bit lesser known border crossing because it's supposed to be a little more quiet and not so jam-packed with a bunch of truck traffic. So it's a it's a really pretty route. It's actually beautiful, which is why I wanted to record this. So I'm on the N304 and not only is the road great, but there's, I'm getting into the mountains. It's really beautiful, mountainous terrain, some vegetation, a little bit more arid. It reminds me a lot of Uganda. Um, 
So I'm enjoying it, just gorgeous. And it's also interesting to be kind of getting ready to cross into the next border. It's always, it's always a little bit like a low level stress of, do I have all the right documentation? Did I read all of the requirements correctly? Um, Malawi now has visa on arrival for Americans and is that gonna be a problem at the border? Just those little things that you learn as, a, as you go along. And I've never had an, a big problem at a border, so it's funny that it still unsettles me slightly, but just being open because I think a lot of people have felt that and it's totally normal and it's okay to feel a little bit concerned about, do I have all the documents I need? Am I gonna get some big problem at the border? Be, be stuck in no man's land for a couple of days while I sort it out. But anyways, this uh, trip up to Ulongwe, where I'm gonna top off for fuel and then border crossing, really pretty. Um, the fuel's a problem, so that's one of my big concerns right now is that in different times of the year, Malawi has fairly significant fuel shortages and at times around the agricultural cycle, um, when they are harvesting and they're selling, um, there's plenty of cash flowing around and there's a lot of fuel available. Um, and then there's times in the year when that's not the case. So there's actually some civil unrest around it and very limited fuel availability. So I am coming into the country chock full. So I'm going to stop in this Yulongwe where it's the last fuel stop for me in Mozambique. And then I'm going to top off the main tank completely. I have already filled up both jerry cans and then I'm going to also fill up both fuel bladders. So I'll have a total of 170 liters of fuel. And also I can't guarantee that I'm going to get the same liters per 100k. Right now I'm getting around 14 liters per 100k. So if I'm in a much more mountainous region or get into soft sand, et cetera, my fuel consumption can go up. So I've got to have a pretty big buffer. Um, the only place that there's fuel reliably right now is in a long way in the capital city. And that's pretty far out of the way from where I want to go. So not the first time I've had this happen. I had it happen in Uzbekistan. And it's pretty interesting to just kind of go into a place not knowing if you're going to be able to get gas. So, but I think I've got a good plan. We'll see how it goes.